G'day everybody, it's Danny from Board Game Sanctuary. I'm an Australian board gamer who loves sharing my passion for this hobby with my friends, family, and you. And today we're gonna to be looking at a board game that tantalizes the senses, something that gets the taste buds rolling. It's got enough juice and meat to it. It's gonna satisfy that craving for diving into a deep strategic game. The game I'm talking about today is Walk and Roll and the Korean Wave expansion. Let's get to it. Orders up, customer wants a chicken noodle soup on the double. All right, I'm onto it. Let me prepare the ingredients. Come on, chicken noodles. Wait, what? Broccoli? Walk and Roll is a game that takes players on a unique culinary journey of the cardboard and texture kind, where you'll take turns rolling these scrumptious ingredient dice and then combine the results together to cook up some steamy dishes. Across each game, players will take turns becoming the head chef as they roll the dice and re-roll any of the results from up to three times until they're satisfied. Once the head chef has served up the ingredients, the players use the ingredients rolled on the dice to craft dishes outlined on the walk and roll menu. There is a twist to this seriously saucy game, however. Only the head chef may use the icons shown on the red dice. The other players will have to make do with whatever is on the white dice. This creates an interesting tension where you start throwing salt at the other players. Because the head chef decides the ingredient combo each and every round, you'll often find that the head chef will try and skewer the dice results in their flavor. The menu board is like a map in your restaurant journey. Making noodle or rice dishes nets you quick points. Think of it like selling great street food. The prawn dishes are popular, but only if the entire set is complete, which earns you extra bonus points. The vegetarian and poultry dishes can be completed in any order, and if pairs of matching dish rows are made, you earn bonus ingredients that can be used straight away. These purple funky recipe books reminds me of my grandma's old cookbooks at home. Converting two of them allows you to specialize in a particular ingredient for the rest of the game. That means that when you roll a future purple funky recipe book icon, you can substitute it with that ingredient. Three recipe books helps you to unlock end game scoring opportunities. Now, cooking isn't without its pressures. Sometimes you'll need a few extra things here or there, which is where the pantry might just be your lifeline. The expert menu on the back is for those who have more adventurous taste buds. Think of it as fine dining. Parts of the menu need to be unlocked by paying recipe books. The pantry becomes a new scoring area where you can circle ingredients that you unlock across the game. These extra items need to be earned and are not for free. What differentiates Walk and Roll from the rest of the flip and write games that are out there in the board gaming universe? There are so many games where you just literally gather resources, tick a box and score points. Well, it actually comes down to how these dice are used. The fact that the lead player gets the advantage of having two bonus items and then gets to also determine what resources are going to be left over for the other players means that the decision is actually more nuanced than you think. These house special tiles that are added to the base game add for some extra variety. There's specific menus that you're an expert in that allows you to earn chef hats that unlocks extra ingredients in your pantry, which I love because it makes your board feel a little bit more individualized. Wow, this ingredient combo is really tough. The one thing that I enjoy about Walk and Roll is the fact that the entire game is contained on this single player board. Every menu choice, every combination that you can kind of dabble in, explore and pick from is outlined on this double-sided board. I love how what creates a lot of the tough choices in the game is through the roll of the dice. If you're the lead player, you'll get to use those red dice. If you're not the lead player, you'll have to really dabble with the leftover ingredients that the lead player has decided for you. One of the great things about the base side of the game is the fact that the game is so simple to teach. If you can tick a box and match icons from dice that are rolled, then you're laughing. There's so many cool little pathways you can take in this game. Furthermore, the other side, the expert menu, has a plethora of 
multiple different challenges. The fact that you have to unlock certain parts of your menu before you can fulfill them to their fullest. That creates for some forward and long-term planning in the game. As you acquire or cook certain meals, that gives you um, extra pantry items that you can use to score points at the end of the game. But what I actually really like about the game is the theme. The fact that you're delving into this menu kind of has this feeling that you're running your own family restaurant or you're sitting around a table with the family and enjoying a really cool meal, having conversations about the day and your aspirations for the future. I guess one of the disadvantages of a game like Walk and Roll is the fact that once you've played the game about six to ten times, you're probably going to be so familiar with the menu that you know exactly where you're going to optimize your points from and you know which dice to re-roll and which combinations you might buy for. And so after quite a lot of plays, the game might feel a little bit repetitive. I also think that the expert menu is really hard. So I guess for some people who are kind of just looking for an easy breezy style game, the simple menu is probably going to be more your flavor. But if you are looking for the challenge, I like how the game is differentiated in its design to cater for those advanced gamers. And whilst the saltiness of the game does add a lot of cool flavors to it, there's a sense that you want to do everything, that sense of desperation that you want to cook all of the noodle dishes before the end of the game. And yet the other players do kind of dictate how quickly you're going to be able to complete those dishes. They hey Danny, so what did you think of the meal? Well, I thought the decisions were quite tough. The ingredients were a little bit dicey and the strategy super spicy. Rock and Roll has a brilliant solo mode. It's played across 10 rounds, and each round you can use all six dice. The solo mode I've found to be incredibly punishing because you've got these dice and you've got these ingredients, yet you've only got a limited amount of time to satisfy and maximize the amounts of points that you get each and every round. And if you get a round where you're wasting some of your ingredients or you're not maximizing their use to get as many points as you can, you can feel your score slowly slipping away. I definitely found that the solo mode was incredibly addictive. I in fact was able to fit three games in an hour alone. After I finished my first game, I just, you know what, had this great feeling of, you know what, I can totally find a different way through, a different pathway to get more points. And I managed to be able to get a higher score than the first time I played. And the third time and the fourth and the fifth time, I was able to supersede my initial scores. I started discovering really cool pathways and really cool ingredient combos in the game. For example, it's really important to go for the upgrades early on, but also to satisfy these vegetarian and poultry recipes, which give you the bonus ingredients that can help you fulfill the noodle and the rice ingredients. Are you tired of cooking every night? Are you sick of having the same meal each and every day? Well, here at Walk and Roll, we customize the menu for you. Choose what you want, give us the ingredients, and we'll whip something together that will not only satisfy you, but keep you craving for more. It's only going to be $3,000 per week. See you later. If you ring now, we get to send you a personal chef with no expertise in cooking whatsoever, but they'll be good at teaching you how to play this board game. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, I'm a gamer with a huge appetite. Walk and Roll might satisfy me at the beginning of my meal, but I need something a little bit bigger, something a little bit more hearty, and something that's gonna really get to your core. And that's where the Korean Wave expansion comes in. Going to a Korean barbecue on a Saturday night with my friends is one of my favorite things to do. It's a communal experience where we get to cook our food and eat kimchi. Kimchi is a new ingredient that cannot be rolled on the dice. It needs to be unlocked by specializing in certain dishes. Kimchi is used to unlock and cook high scoring dishes that require special skills. The Korean Wave menu now has a pantry that can be unlocked and opened up as you cook more and more dishes. Diversifying your pantry now nets you extra prestige. There is now a race to also cook all of the dishes in a section first. Doing this helps you to earn respect in the chef community.
Overall, the new Korean menu injects a new flavor into the game, one where the strategy is a lot more yuri and impactful. What this new ingredient really does to the game is that it means at the beginning of the game, not every item is able to be cooked. And so you get this sense of progression throughout the game. The fact that you start off with a simple base set of skills, and as you acquire these new ingredients, you unlock other recipes and other skills. This progression of being able to feel like you are growing as a player, growing as a chef, and expanding your restaurant menu as you become more successful, feels like a great thematic tie-in. The Korean Wave expansion does feel like you're playing a series of little mini games all interwoven together. I love the idea how now in the pantry, if you're able to use all five ingredients, you actually score cumulative points. You can also gain skills in particular areas by using your kimchi and three recipe books. You can even store your kimchi and your recipe books so that you can kind of spend them when the time suits you best. Now, if you're an avid follower of my board game channel, you'll know that I love board games and trees. And I also love a cool skills tree. The idea that you can spend two kimchi or two recipe books plus a kimchi to advance down the skill tree and follow off different branching paths to fine tune your expertise and your um, knife chopping skills or your ingredient um, flavoring skills. This tree creates a network of new opportunities to explore each and every game. Hi, and welcome to Walk and Roll. I'll be your waiter this evening. I'll get the vegetarian noodles and the vegetarian rice. Uh, could you also please bring out a player aid as well? Thank you very much. So when it comes to filling your pantry with some high quality ingredients, or maybe your board game collection, in fact, with some really good roll and write games, Walk and Roll just might be the game for you. It has a small shelf space, the rules are super easy to pick up, yet the strategy and layers in the game are at the right level where you can play with the family, but also play with advanced gamers. I love the differentiated leveling that the menus have in both the expansion and the base game. I found Walk and Roll to be a thoroughly enjoyable experience. Not because I like ticking things and filling in boxes, but the fact that each and every dice roll creates a new scenario, a new situation, a new set of ingredients for me to contend with and try and manage. And I just love that feeling of working in a restaurant and satisfying customers. This game definitely gives me that family dinnerly feel that I often crave for. So I would give Walk and Roll an 8 out of 10 and the Korean Wave expansion a 9 out of 10. So, what are some of your favorite roll and write games? I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. Now, if you found this video super helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to this video, as well as checking out some of the plethora of other cool board game content I have on my main page. If you really want to help Board Game Sanctuary grow, which I would really appreciate it, head over to my Patreon page and support me there. Otherwise, this is Danny Sanya, and I hope your next uh, meal is going to be a delicious one.